personal? Yep. Ah, uh, this meeting is being live streamed. So live. Okay. There Good you go. Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. We're there. And Cliff, you're back from Texas at this point? Uh, Cliff, I never went. Uh, we're leaving in a couple of weeks, actually, <laughs> unless I can find some way to avoid it. <laughs> you like going so much. Oh, I adore it. I just there's there's nothing like uh, there's nothing like traffic and air pollution and dumb politicians. Me is being live streamed and blistering. <laughs> That's true. We are being recorded at this point. So we might have to, oh, I know. I'm, 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 not, embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. And okay, you guys. Melissa, nice to see you from Hope. At least it looks sunny and nice in Hope. Maybe, Melissa? All right, you guys. So, uh, okay. so sorry. Um, so I'll call the meeting to order. It's 504. And um, nice to see everyone. And um, uh, we will uh, not take any kind of roll call, of course. Um, and uh, the meeting is being live streamed and that's how we do the minutes. Uh, or let's say Matt does the minutes graciously uh, and by reviewing that. So um, with that, um, we will go right into the action, the first action item, which is to approve the July 14th, 2021 minutes. Did anybody have any suggested changes? No, so moved. I'm moving. Uh, Jeremy, is there a second? Sarah Ann. Uh, Sarah Ann, you might be muted. Uh, no, no changes, nothing for me. Oh, okay. Was there a second to approve the minutes? Cliff, okay, thank you. And all in favor? I, you know, we're doing this, you know, not as I will remind everybody again, we are not any official, you know, municipal body or anything. So we uh, run these um, meetings a little bit uh, loosely, um, not like our select board or committee meetings uh, for the towns. So the next item is um, a report by the uh, leadership team. Um, so Matt has told me that he doesn't have the agenda or anything with him because he's on the road. So I guess that would be me. Um, Denise is sailing. So by default, I'm going to just step through some of these things. Um, we, uh, uh, we are having discussions with respect to, you know, what our, how to approach thing, uh, build considering the Otelco fiber build. Um, and um, we are looking for, of course, ways to fund um, fund the, uh, the, the potential build uh, in phases. And um, one of the things that I think that um, is somewhat potentially um, optimistic is new um, EDA ARPA funds that we will talk about when we get, when we get there. But actually, now that I see that we've done the agenda in this way, um, I'm not sure there's much more to say under this agenda item. And let's get into the more specific ones. Um, obviously, we have you know strived to be a resource partner um, for other areas. And so, as you'll see, the way we've done the agenda now is that we have the, the participating towns, and then we have the other invited guests, which include a number of um, other towns and areas, and we welcome their participation and, and uh, active you know, input in our meetings. And Carla, I see that you have joined us and welcome. Oh, thanks. So um, Car Carla is with Wiscasset and she has told us that recently that Wiscasset has formed a broadband committee. So that's great to hear. Um, okay, so going into the more specifics, um, number four is the MIDC regional utility update discussions. Um, Thomaston and Rockland, um, I did send out a note saying that Rockland had um, voted the city council on Monday to join um, the interlocal agreement. And Ben, I saw it, I, there you are. Uh, do you have anything that you wanna add there? I think it was a unanimous vote. vote. It was a unanimous vote. Um, wow, no new, no news really. Yeah, 
Uh, I think yeah. people are excited to participate and are, you know, hoping that we can be successful. Yeah, we uh, we attended it, Matt and Mark Willette and I had attended a meeting last uh, Monday, a week ago Monday, um, and it was a good discussion and um, it seemed like everybody was quite supportive. So I was really glad to see that was unanimously passed. Good job, Ben. Um, the, uh, uh, I guess in September, they're going to name a, um, a board member for the, for the utility. They haven't quite done that yet, but we as a utility have to get together in the meantime with the um, documents and you know, take the action for actually voting on admitting Thomaston and Rockland into the utility and, um, a, and uh, including their board members as part of the board going forward. So Thomaston had voted also, I think prior to the last meeting to join the utility, Zell, and I think as of today, we have their documentation. So we're ready to uh, roll on that. And I've, I'm working with Tom Luttrell to get the documentation for Rockland. So, so we hope to be uh, expanding the board and all that good stuff very soon. So welcome. Um, we, in order to get any funding um, uh, for, you know, government funding, we have to have a, a DUNS number and a SAM number, which is not anything that any of us had dealt with before. So I have gone through the process of registering us for both. And we now have our official DUNS number and SAM's number as of a couple of days ago. So um, we also had found out that um, uh, I think we didn't quite fully understand this at the time that the 501, that the, um, the regional utility was established, uh, that we are a 501c4 for good reason, because 501c4 can do lobbying. And as you know, trying to get these funds and affecting legislation is an important part of what we do. Um, so we needed to be a 501c4 instead of a 501c3 for that purpose. We did not realize that even though a 501c4 is a tax exempt organization itself, we did not realize that donations to the 501c4 were not tax exempt for the donor. We can easily um, form a, you know, an affiliate entity that will be a 501c3 um, to remedy that. But we have not taken that um, step quite yet because we're still trying to um, ascertain uh, whether, we, uh, whether we really have a good chance of getting private, private donations funding um, for the utility. So we'll take that step when we have a better, um, a better handle on that. And I think as we go forward, I will talk a little bit more about some of the steps that we're taking in that regard. Um, and the bank account, we have our the first, um, the bank account with the first setup and on Friday, um, it will be funded with $20,000 from Rockport, uh, followed there shortly thereafter with $20,000 from Camden. You guys will remember that we had previously, I say we because it was when I was on the Rockport Select Board still, we had previously decided um, to put $20,000 a piece for Camden and Rockport only. Uh, toward broadband, not knowing what that meant at the time that we were budgeting for it in the spring. And so Rockport and Camden are both transferring those $20,000 um, amounts over to the MIDC. So we will shortly have $40,000 in the account. Rockport will handle our um, financial bookkeeping matters and so forth. And in fact, we got a notice today, it's gonna to cost us about four or $5,000 just to be on the, their, the TRIO system for Rockport to do this um, you know, in an automated fashion. So that 40,000 will go down to 35,000 pretty quickly. Um, we had some legal fees um, that we had um, incurred and um, Rockport has very graciously stepped forward and, and basically paid those. Um, Camden uh, has also given us um, the benefit of some of their um, legal, uh, le legal analysis through Bill Kelly, who, um, you know, who does the Camden work. So we really appreciate both those towns um, saving us even extra money for the utility. Um, okay, so that takes us into Axiom Technologies. Does anybody else have any questions on just the um, 
the MIDC regional utility itself. Um, Axiom Technologies, planning, uh, the planning study network design. Uh, we have um, a number of towns who have uh, decided to go with the Axiom uh, study and they have made payments directly to Axiom so that does not um, pass through the utility. Um, we, um, as noted in the agenda, the, the network design, the rough costs, the pro forma financials, um, are all um, products that we expect to see from Axiom. Um, we expect to see at least some initial uh, design work from Axiom actually in the next, um, in the next week or two, um, maybe some preliminary work, um, although it's not really uh, due, uh, due from them for the, the first four towns until the end of September. So, but it's moving along quite nicely. And I don't recall if I had told you guys this, but um, Axiom uh, is actually, uh, um, again, graciously uh, um, leaned on their engineering, an engineering uh, partner that they have to, um, to actually provide us with a, a more detailed, not that this is gonna be a detailed engineering study, it won't. And a detailed engineering study certainly costs more than, than, um, than what we're paying, but um, we are getting the benefit of more engineering, high level engineering work than we would otherwise get because Axiom's leaning on their engineering partner um, to do that for us. So that will be great. Um, I know that um, Axiom has talk to union um, recently. And I think that, oh yeah, John is still on. John, did you have any comments that you wanted to make about that? Yeah, that was a good session. And we particularly appreciated Matt Siegel coming along. He had some good observations and good comments to make. Yeah, we think we're off to a good start with Axiom. Good, good. So we encourage any of the towns who have um, who have paid Axiom for you know for that feasibility study to um, to meet with them or arrange with us to meet with them arrange with them you know with Mark directly um, to make sure that whatever you're you know you're hoping to get out of that study that you do in fact get so that they know what your expectations are because all the towns differ a little bit in that regard. Anything else on that? I don't have anything to add if that's what you mean. Okay. Um, I say for one sector, um, Craig, if you can just circle back to me, I think we're kind of due for a Cushing uh, oil change. It might be nice for us to get together. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, and I'd love to participate in a meeting with Cushing with you guys too. Yeah, we uh, we just uh, the warrant this week uh, we 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 paid Axiom, so that they should have it. So um, that's one thing. And then we're just working with, um, uh, we're just waiting for some legal counsel on the actual agreement, um, which were, it got delayed because I was out of town. And so hopefully in the next select board meeting, we'll be able to look at that. And I think, um, no, I was wrong. I was thinking that you had the same counsel that Rockland has, but you don't. No. I think they're the same council that South Thomaston has. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, anything else on Axiom? Matt and Denise and I had a several hour conversation the same day that John met with uh, Mark. Um, we had a several hour meeting with Mark to go over some details on various items. Um, for example, you know, some of our towns have subdivisions that have underground utilities and how to deal with those underground utilities. Um, we also, you know, discussed potential places for the, uh, the, the central office. Um, Rockland has a place that they have, uh, or that uh, Allshead folks have suggested uh, in Rockland. And we talked about that being the potential versus versus uh, the possibility of, of creating our own central office so that you don't have to forever pay rent 
Um, so, you know, it's those kinds of things that we were going back and forth on in terms of um, pros and cons on different approaches. Um, but I don't want to drag you through all that because we'd be here all night. Um, but you feel free to contact me offline if you want to talk about any of that. Yeah, John. Question. Uh, when you talk about under, underground conduits, do you mean uh, under the roads or do you mean from the, uh, from the nearest pole to the premises conduit under the... No, some of the... Front yard? Yeah, some of the subdivisions, um, some subdivisions, not a lot, but some of our subdivisions have underground utilities. And um, so Rockport has, you know, I think several, actually we've asked the, the four towns to come up with the places, whether they're downtown or in, um, you know, in certain subdivisions where there are underground utilities. So, it, and, and you know, the, the things that are at play there, for example, are like, if you ask a subdivision to put in conduit where it may not exist right now, um, mm -hmm. It can cost six figures to yep. you know, maybe 30 homeowners, which is a lot of money, obviously. On the other hand, um, the utility saves money if they're not having to pay $1,000 per pole, because there are no poles, to install, you know, to install the fiber. So you mm -hmm. have to take those sort of offsets into account. And what's the fair way of doing that with, um, with those kinds of subdivisions? So those are the kinds of things that we were discussing just as an example. Um, another you know, way of approaching it is to, is to ditch witch basically the fiber uh, mm -hmm. in those places, disrupt the grass a little bit, but in return for what could ultimately be a, a significantly reduced build in those places, which mm -hmm. I... You know, there's more to be said on that, but I, I hope that there are the, the, the ditch witch and, and laying the fiber on the ground thing, as we've talked about before in woodsy areas and stuff, that there are places, hopefully, that we can be creative and reduce the costs of a build and maybe enable us to build places in places or in towns sooner than we might otherwise be able to. Yeah, so. I agree. That's uh, that. There were going to be a lot of special cases in the connections area. A lot of what, John? Special cases. Yeah. With a solution. Yeah. Well, we understand each other. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to be as creative as possible. And so we yes. you know, would love anybody who wants to participate in those discussions with us too. We'd be happy to, you know, to have you involved. Good. Um, okay. So then the next thing I have we have on the agenda is the project funding. Um seed money strategies. Um, I would say that, as you know, and we're certainly not, you know, we, we're not and we cannot depart from this. We have never asked um, the towns to give us, um, to contribute their seed money to, I mean, I'm sorry, their ARPA money to, um, to the MIDC. And we're not, and it's not a condition of being part of the utility. That said, there are some towns that are looking at doing that. Rockport, for example, is at least going to consider it at their, at their August 24th meeting. Um, what they've really looked at is the fact that they don't really feel that they have water or sewer um, infrastructure uh, needs to, or, or I shouldn't say that they don't have sewer needs. They do have sewer needs, but they don't think they can or should spend the money on sewer without getting into the details. That seems to be the current thinking. Um, water, they don't, you know, it's not applicable. So they're looking at some, at least on the select board and Rockport are looking at this in terms of um, at least the 50% that is coming in this September might be something that they are considering contributing to the utility toward the build for seed money. And of course we encourage any other towns who want to consider that as a you know, contribution, that's a great uh, thing for them to do. Uh, because as you know, we're working on county funding and we'll continue to work on county funding, um, but you know, how much or if we'll get any um, is still to be seen. So anyway, that's one of the things that's going on in seed money. One of the things we've also asked Rockport to consider is <clears throat> possibly taking their 1.5 or two mile um, uni network that they currently have right now and consider contributing that as an asset to the utility. Um, and um, 
So that's, uh, I see John shaking your head. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to see you as a good financial uh, person shaking your head on that one. So we should talk about that a little bit more. Um, but anyway, in any event, um, they don't have a lot of users on it, but you know, it is say two miles worth of fiber that's laid. And um, I would think that that should have some value and some sort of skin in the game for, you know, because as we've discussed many times, everybody we talk to wants to see skin in the game in order to give us any kind of funding. So it's really important that if Rockport steps forward and provides some of their ARPA funds that will demonstrate skin in the game. If they were to contribute their existing two mile network, that's skin in the game, right? So all favorable things if they decide to do that. And as I said, August 24 seems to be the date that they're gonna address it. And just in support of that, Deborah, the conversation came up last night at the Camden Select Board uh, meeting where also um, on the, the docket was to contribute some of the ARPA funds to the Development Corporation. So again, That's great. Um, not by request, just as part of a, a strategic plan for distribution of those funds that would best serve the community and best serve the region. That's great. Um, so that that's one seed money set of strategies. Um, another one, obviously, is we're continuing, and I mentioned earlier, we're continuing to um, review whether or not we think there is a, a market or an effort there for um, us to be able to get some um, some private uh, contributions to a 501c affiliate of the fi of our utility. Um, and in that regard, we um, have had some conversations with some local people who have done, who have been involved in big fundraising efforts for like the Midco School of Technology, for the YMC, or for the, um, yeah, for the YMCA, for the, um, for the Rockport Library recently. Um, so they're having some conversations with, people that they think might be potential donors and just kind of um, assessing uh, what they think. And we expect them to come back to us with their thoughts in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I guess that's about all that can be said on that. Uh, I am speaking, Matt and I are speaking before the Camden Rotary again, which was the first Rotary we spoke to months ago. Um, and that's on the 17th. And I know that the last time we spoke at the Rotary, there were some people who expressed some interest um, sort of anonymously through a chat to me about possibly um, donating. So I think that, you know, I'm hoping that <laughs> that um, might be um, of interest to them still too. So we'll see. Um, uh, another thing, uh, when it comes to the county funds, uh, I think there is some, well, there is some discussion right now um, going on about rather than having the utility go forth to the county, to Knox County, and ask for um, the county funds through an application process. Let me back up a little bit. The county did send out, as I think most of you know, uh, app, um, a um, sort of request to submit applications between August 13th and 31st for county ARPA funding. And... Um, we're thinking that rather than having um, the utility go forth and submit a request because Knox County seems to view us as lobbyists or something, uh, as, as opposed to the towns that we represent, we are looking at the strategy of some towns themselves going out and um, submitting those requests. Uh, and so we're hoping that Rockport may do that. We're hoping that, for example, Rockport you know, if they make a decision to contribute some of the funds that we talked about earlier, that they might then be in a good position to say, and county, we would like you to give us some matching funds of X amount of money, um, you know, toward this effort um, to build out Rockport, for example. And Camden could take a similar approach or, you know, other towns. So that's, I know that we're, you know, we're really tight on time here because the 13th is Friday. Um, but we have until the 31st, but that's the kind of um, approach we're looking at the towns taking at the moment with the county. Deborah? Yeah, John. Deborah, are you thinking of not submitting a, uh, a, uh, MID, an MIDC request for funding? 
unless yeah. you have something outside those meetings, I really did not see them as saying no. They just objected to our approach. Uh, did they you, didn't. Did you even know they, in there that I don't know about? No, they, they didn't. I mean, some of them have publicly said that broadband, that they don't want to contribute anything to broadband. Oh, okay. Now, I was not aware it of that. Publicly has about that. Knox County Commissioners. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I did not hear that. Okay, yeah. you've got, you'll get information I don't have. All right. Good. Yeah. No, they they right. said that publicly. A couple of them have. Um, and, and, and and they might look look at it differently if the town submitted a request an application. Maybe, particularly yeah. if they see us as a lobbying organization instead of seeing us as the towns, which we do represent the towns. Hmm. Okay, you have information that I wasn't aware of. Okay, thank you. So, Deborah, the other question I had on the county was there was some talk earlier on about looking into whether there could be a referendum on this in the in the county um, versus having the three of them make the decision. Yeah, and um, the town manager and council that were looking into that um, got back to us and indicated that um, the chance of being successful in that was pretty slim. Okay. From a legal standpoint, so that's unfortunate. Anything else? So I, I noticed that, um, what did I read? I read something from um, Steve Coltai uh, today, Jordan, um, in which he had uh, written something that indicated that Waldo County was taking a position that they were going to give maybe $20,000 to each of their towns for broadband, which of course is a tiny amount of money. And, and that together that only represents like $300,000, which was like 4% of the total amount that they were receiving and ARPA funds, I think were the numbers that I saw. So Jordan, do you have anything to add about that, that Waldo County has made that decision or why, or what are they thinking about funding instead? Um, well, or Bob, Jordan, go ahead. And then Bob, oh, sorry. follow up. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, I think it, it's a good sign that they proactively sent out money to each town for the purpose of broadband. But then I know in, <laughs> in subsequent communications, they've kind of rolled that back a little. They were like, it would be nice if you used it on broadband. And then it was like, you know, it was first it was like, this is what it's intended for. And then it kind of got watered down. But in any case, we know that we're going to have to wait until we get exact instructions on how we are supposed to use the money, even after it comes down from Waldo County. I don't know what they're planning on spending the other money on if this is the only allocation for broadband that they're having. I don't think they're giving that indication, but I mean, I do know that there's, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot going on and a lot of people want it. So, I mean, that having been said, the fact that they on their own sent this money out is better than nothing, but I, I can't look into a crystal ball and predict what they would do. But like I said, it really was a very positive surprise in, in my opinion anyway. And Bob, did you want to add to that? Sure. Um, I was at the uh, commissioner's court on, um, I guess it was Tuesday, yesterday. <laughs> and, and um, you know, I basically told them, it, you know, as a Southwestern Walter County Broadband Coalition chair, we were thankful that they decided to give us $20,000 per town, but we were a little disappointed because the funds that we need we need we need as much public public funding as we can get since we're such a underserved under underserved unserved and rural area, and um, we've we've been pushing. I mean, we pushed uh, with a bunch of uh, people on the, one of the first meetings, and then we had uh, Senator Curry and um, um, Ken, Kendra Joe at at another meeting. And then after that meeting, we got the letter from them that says what they're what they intend to do. And the initial letter said they were going to send 9.8 percent of the ARPA funds for broadband. And then they came back with another letter that said, "Well, you know, that's really not true because we can't tell the towns how they have to spend their money." So 
we're just going to give each town $20,000 and let them figure out how they want to spend it. And I, I presume that means within, within the ARPA fund, the ARPA spending guidelines. So I don't know. I told them, I, 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 I did tell them that I, I was a little bit worried um, as, uh, <laughs> as also a budget committee member uh, on the Waldo County Budget Committee, that you know, there's really no oversight in how they're spending the, how they're spending these funds. They determined what projects they want want to uh, have, and I think that we wouldn't have gotten anything if we weren't at least pushing them for something. And I guess I'm not too too excited about what we what we got, but you know, we'll take what we can get and keep keep pushing. So I, I don't know if I've helped you or, or oh, thanks. Answer, but. thanks, Bob. Do you have any, uh, have you heard um, what kind of projects that they're looking at spending? <laughs> they, 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 yeah, they, they have what's called a garden you know, where they uh, take the, um, I can't call them prisoners, the um, residents that the sheriff houses up there. And uh, they grow food and they give it to food banks and, you know, soup kitchens. That's a $1.2 million project. Yeah, uh, it's, it's really what they want. No, the $1.25 million, $1 million is for new equipment for the uh, communication center. Because their old, their old equipment is outdated and not, not serviceable. Then well, they that, have, yeah, that's good. They have $1.6 million um uh identified as uh money that they want to use to build two facilities one they want to do a um emergency management um facility at the garden and that requires a new building and they also want to do a um a food storage facility at that garden because if they, you know, they, they just grow fresh fruit food and if they don't store it properly, then it just goes bad. They initially said they were going to give 9% of the budget to broadband, but at $20,000 per town, that works out to be about 6.8%. And then when I said, well, what about all the other money? And they said, well, we've already figured out you know how we want to spend that. You know they they've got a courthouse that they need to turn down. Turn down. They need they have uh, boilers that uh, need to be replaced in in the facilities and stuff like that. So are I, those things ARPA ARPA qualified? Because you know, some of the things like boilers and courthouse stuff, I can't imagine how that comes under the ARPA requirements. Yeah, I can't either. But one of the things that uh, they assured me is that they were going to get. Uh, legal representation to make sure that they were spending the funds in accordance with the guidelines. So I hope so because treasury can claw it back if they don't. That's right. And they, you know, we, we do tell them that. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I never worked so hard, hard on this little bit of something and got, got so little out of stuff that everybody in, 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 Washington is saying, oh, we're giving you all guys all this money for broadband and all of this stuff. And it's going for, I think, what what they want to send it for. And if if anybody is interested, uh, uh, Jason, um, who is the the um, IT manager for Waldo County, uh, said that he was going to put our discussion up on um, on on the commissioner's calendar so you could review a recording and see what we did say and what their responses were. But I looked, I looked this morning at it and it wasn't there yet. So I think that it's time that the media got on top of this and really, well, we did, we did have uh, uh, a uh, reporter there. So uh, Fran Garcia. So I think he's uh, with the Republican journal. Yeah, Matt. Bob, how does it work in terms of um, Waldo County with the budget committee, in terms of who's making these decisions and at what point is the budget committee um, part of this decision making process and um, having oversight over the spending? The budget committee isn't part of this because they're treating it like a um, like a, a grant it's and they're treating it 
you know, I don't know, in our town, we have a, a Warren article that says if we get money from the f federal, state, and local or gifts for a specific purpose that our town can, our town um, select board can uh, decide how to spend that money. And I think the county is probably doing the same thing. So right now in Waldo County, we don't have an elected treasurer because he, he resigned. So the, the, the person that's taking the treasurer's functions appointed by the, by the commissioners, the um, budget committee will not be reviewing how they spend these funds because it's not part of the normal budgeting process for tax purposes. Although I, I told them we're gonna be paying for this for a long, long time. So we might as well try to get something, something out of it. And, um, you know, the public input that we had into this was after they had made the decisions about how they wanted to spend their money. So I, I guess we, we've carved out a little bit, but, you know, that's what we've got right now. And uh, Carla, here. Carla, do you have any input on Lincoln County and what's happening down there in terms of a procedure or in terms of a process? I mean, we've heard that Knox uh, that has an, an, AR, an RFP procedure were part of that in terms of application. It sounds like Bob Waldo is its own universe, just having commissioners make decisions and cutting out the budget committee. Uh, Carla, any sense of what's happening in Lincoln in terms yeah, of um, there's procedure? Uh, the town administrator started with a very open process and has been doing stakeholder meetings uh, with different interest groups. She uh, told our commission ahead of the Lincoln County Planning Commission early that she was very interested in broadband, but she didn't want to make a uni unilateral decision on the money, nor could she really. Uh, but I, I finally got invited to a stakeholder group, which will be held August 25th. I, I can bring people along with me. And uh, I'm just trying to get a better sense if they want written materials or what they want or just a discussion. I'm not even sure she will be there, uh, but I believe Mary Ellen Barnes, uh, the, the planning commission is, is hosting it. So I know them well. Um, I think broadband will be on the agenda, but, you know, we're so much further behind that even if I wanted to make a proposal for money, um, it, it would be, I think, startup money for a lot of these groups. Some are, are further along than Wiscasset is, but I don't, I, I don't have a strategy yet what I would pitch, except the, what we had talked about earlier, I think, Matt, was, um, you know, this is a huge one-time lift. Uh, for so many communities and to, you know, uh, waste it in a way on stuff that other, other sources of money could be used for uh, would be a shame. So I think I'll probably take that tack. Um, and I don't know what her other priorities are. I think affordable housing is. And I don't, I don't know how, uh, Deborah, I think we talked about whether that could actually be a, um, a use under um, the ARPA money. Right. I, I don't think so, but I have to review it more. Right. And Carla, from your experience, um, your past experience, you know, this whole issue of that money being considered a grant or being revenue, um, do you have any input into that? I mean, again, Bob seems to be dealing with that. We're dealing with it in Knox County. Any, any insight into that? Um, not, like in this, not in this context, no. Um, uh, I don't know, it's probably, you'd probably have to talk to some of the towns that have already um, put in a, uh, well, there aren't too many that, like one that's done a utility. How about Georgetown? Maybe talk to them about it. Um, how, but they didn't, get, they didn't get an investment from the town. That was the whole point. They got an individual investor to prop up their system. So no, I, I don't know um, much about that. So Matt, d d sorry, Zell, didn't we didn't we determine by looking at their charter that Knox County's charter that this needs to go to the budget committee? That was think, the, the consensus. I think, that... I think that's our consensus um, from our town managers too. A few of our town managers that if you look at the Knox County charter, this should be going through the budget committee. Now, whether or not we get any better luck through the budget committee is a you know different issue, but. 
Um, but that is something that we think is an issue in Knox County. And I don't know if that is applicable to any of your counties. And Zell, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, sorry. I just had a question kind of thinking about, um, you know, Thomaston, if we were going to submit a letter to Knox County sort of by August 31st, looking to do matching funds or um, looking for money for broadband that could be contributed to the, um, to the group. Do you anticipate that since we have the pending interlocal agreement that that would be something that we would be um, joining before that date and we should do it as a member of sort of the four towns or most likely would that happen after August 31st and we should just do it like independently as Tom's done? Well, just it's, yeah, no, it's a good good question, Zal. Um, I'm sure that um, that we can somehow um, come up with a meeting. You know, Denise doesn't uh, doesn't get back um, in town until August 23rd, but um, I'm sure that we could do a board meeting if we needed to to admit Thomaston and Rockland. If there was, you know, if there was a need to hurry it up, you know, for it, that's good. That's a good question. That's a good example. Um, I'm sure that we could make it happen. Um, the um, but. Doing it at the MIDC, you know, as I said earlier, I think that we're kind of taking the position that Rockport, or we have discussed with Rockport, that we might be better off by having the towns go at it individually, because, you know, they have a responsibility, um, like under the charter in Knox County, they have a responsibility to do what the towns are looking at them to do. Um, the towns are their member towns, right? And there's some good language that's in the charter. And, um, you know, they always give this um, sort of lip service to this idea that, well, what do the towns want? We have to talk to the towns, not recognizing or believing that when we talk to them, we said, hey, we're representing those towns right here. And they don't buy into that. So by having the towns go directly to them from the town manager and the select boards, we think that that might be a, you know, that's obviously not an argument that they can throw up. So um, obviously, if Rockport did that, they would certainly, you know, hand that money over to the MITC. They wouldn't say that. I mean, I don't think that at Rockport, I mean, it's in the process of being drafted, the application. I don't think that, you know, certainly Rockport's not going to hide the fact that they're part of the MIDC and they'd say that they were doing this, you know, in concert with the MIDC, but this is what they as the town want. Um, and here's some seed money or, you know, some, some skin in the game to, um, to show it. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful for you to noodle around. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, we've talked about it a little in Thomaston and we were sort of anticipating that as a group, there would be something submitted by the 31st. And so we weren't planning on individually doing that. Um, but certainly if what it sounds like is if, if the group, the four towns together aren't planning on submitting that, then, then maybe we should do that. So I just wasn't sure you know, by the time it actually comes together, how we should word it. I mean, I assume we'll be accepted into the group, but obviously yeah. um, we just, yeah, I think it would just um, be easy to explain it. I mean, obviously it's for the benefit of Thomaston and the people at Thomaston, you know, supported moving forward with it. So um, yeah, that, that's helpful. And the four towns, though, I mean, we can we can certainly have a meeting where we had, you know, like one select board member from each town and, you know, the manager from each town, you know, so that, you know, have a have a, a, a Zoom discussion about this and see what the other towns think if they think that the MIDC should be um, submitting it directly. But as I said, you know, we think that it might be more persuasive if the towns do it individually and even more persuasive. And I'm not saying, you know, again, this is not a requirement, but, you know, um, even more persuasive if the town has some money that they can put forth and say, here's my skin in the game. We want you to, you know, we're putting our money where our mouth is. And so we want you to, you know, to match that or to come up with some matching funds. Um, I just want to let you know that um, at that last meeting, we had four selectmen there from different towns. So Pete, Pete was there. I was there. Elaine. Higgins was there and um, um, Mike Ray. So they, you know, they know it's the towns that are interested in getting this and working with 
I mean, at least for Waldo County. Yeah, I hear you. I, I think that, I mean, honestly, I think that we need to start putting a lot of pressure on them from a media perspective and writing some press releases and talking to um, and talking to the press heavy duty to put more pressure on them because, you know, the county commissioners are not used to pressure from the public. And I think it's time to do that. And Zell, I would only add, let's try and get together at the beginning of next week. Um, so namely Rockland, Thomaston, Rockport, and Camden. So I see Mark Ratner's there. Uh, let's try and just uh, and gather uh, Monday or Tuesday uh, to hash this out. Uh, because again, in this meeting, I won't go into details, but the idea of whatever application it would be, uh, would be part of a broader uh, regional, uh, it would be a, uh, an investment for the broader region and the language, how important that is. So that would be part of what we'd want to discuss on Monday or Tuesday when we get together. Um, the expression that you can hear me use throughout the state is the idea of a pathway project. So at this point, the funding that there would be providing X hundreds of thousands of dollars um, in conjunction, again, in terms of the language with the utility would be part of a regional, like a broader regional. This would be a pathway, a pathway or phase one towards the greater regional investment. So again, I, I would love to get the, the this new core four together on Monday or Tuesday. Um, just to see, make sure everyone's on the same page. Not so much, I don't think this is the arena or the, uh, the area to discuss that, but I think it's imperative that we do it on Monday and Tuesday and just uh, get us all together. Okay. Um, so in the interest of moving this along, we talked about uh, the last thing under project funding, uh, again, is just to, um, to mention what I alluded to very quickly earlier, and that is that the EDA, um, Economic Development Agency, you know, who we have all no doubt gotten grants for, uh, from, you know, for sewer or other, you know, types of projects, um, they sent something out to the towns and to, well, at least to McHead, to their development districts, including McHead, um, which, um, uh, you know, the talk about the um, the uses of the ARPA funds um, that they have coming to them. Um, and um, EDA has, I'm told, been pretty um, enthusiastic, maybe that's overstating it, but pretty close, enthusiastic to um, contributing to broadband infrastructure in the past for economic development purposes. And um, they, this particular grant, usually the EDA grants, um, have um, a match from the towns of like 50%. So you can imagine in this case, you know, 50% is a lot of money. And in this particular ARPA um, grant, it's an 80% uh, 80 from the EDA for a 20% match from the towns or regional <laughs> districts or whatever. And so um, that's pretty uh, pretty generous compared to, and, and, I, and I understand from McHead that you can in fact get all the way up to 100%, but that's, of course, a, a, you know, a heavier lift. So um, I understand that the, let's see, Matt helped me out, that the date by which you have to submit the EDA ARPA application is, do you remember? Yeah, I believe it's September 2022. It's actually, uh, I, is it, is it yeah. March? Right. It's, it's March of 20, oh, it's March. March. March 2022. March. And they make, I'm sorry, and the award, the award is September 2022. But yeah. they're actually awarding on a rolling basis. Exactly. Oh, they are. I had not heard that. Yeah. So oh, we could so apply so tomorrow. So submitting it earlier is a good thing. Oh, I had not heard that. No one had told me that. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic news. I, I just spoke with Max today from mm -hmm. McKid. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've been having some conversations with Max and with Brian from McKid. That's great, Jeremy. Um, and um, and they had said, I mean, they had been using uh, the suggesting that we get something in to them by March um, so that they could, because of the very various processes that have to go on behind the scenes, um, with a drop dead date of September, but um, again, they had not told us about the uh, about the the rolling thing. So that's yeah. Great to know. I, I would say in talking with Max again today, and I'm talking with him on another another piece. But um, it, it it is if we get it in, I mean, we should try to move on this sooner than later with Max and McEd. At least get him as much information as we can, a good summary of the project. 
um, as much financial information costs that we're looking for, you know, what yeah. it's really going to cost. Yeah. If we can yeah. nail that down, we have a much, you know, pretty good chance of, I think, being successful, to be honest with you. So we've already sent him some uh, information. We already sent him, you know, just a copy of what we had filed with Connect Main for um, grant stuff there, just for, you know, general narrative stuff. And we had, um, we told him that we had the pro formas that are coming from Axiom in the near future. So that will give us the, you know, hopefully most, most of the financials that we need. Um, and, um, and we have to, you know, at the time that we submit, we have to have that 20%, um, that 20% of seed money of the match for whatever it is we ask for. The ceiling on, a, on those grants, as I understand it, is $10 million, but of course we have to come up with 2 million and that's not something that, you know, we can come up with. Plus, because uh, this is a, you know, the region only gets what, 134 million and the region being the entire New England region, I think we're not going to um, be successful if we ask for that kind of money. So we were talking about asking for something that's more along the lines of perhaps 5 million. But you know that's what we've been. All, all this is news to us in the past, in the last week. So we're trying to noodle all that around. And then beyond this, Deb, there's also the infrastructure bill that was passed yesterday, which is separate from this completely. Right. So I think that's important to know. And and Max and McGett are working on trying to get as much info on that as they can. I mean, you know, it's still still playing out. But so I think we've yeah. got some good good options. I think the thing about the um, the infrastructure bill, like, sure, that's a lot of money. It's great and everything, but you know we're going to be in competition with the incumbents as we always are. And um, the one nice thing about the EDA grant, my understanding, and tell me if I'm wrong, Jeremy, is that um, the only the municipalities and government entities, um, including um, us, can uh, um, can apply for that. You can't have incumbents going in there and applying for those funds. Well, and I'd be more specific, we're, we're in the EDA, uh, EAA uh, grant application, which is specific to utilities that are nonprofits. So again, there's a, right. we're really starting to narrow down the market, yeah. excuse me, the, the, the field. Which I mean, what happens about. sometimes is community, you, you know, private projects will utilize, um, Partner, partner with eight entities that can receive EDA funds to pull off larger projects, if you will. Um, so, you know, I think it's, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't forget that, that I think it's possible for municipalities and other entities to work with other for-profit entities for the public good, if you understand. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least it's a better better field to be playing in than for sure no doubt about it yeah, yeah. so which leads us you know we we're going to try to end by by six o'clock so i need to um to uh to go faster here but anyway um you know the board was nominated approved and all that good stuff for the um for the mca we've discussed it in the past concerns that we have with it i did see today matt that um our friend uh tim schneider is the chair of the group so um so anyway, that's, um, that's interesting. So that leads us into really um, MI uh, community and regional updates. Are there any updates that the towns want to give that we haven't already done? Melissa, do you want to report on LCI at all or? Um, sure, I don't really have much to update. Um, we did have what was called a launch meeting uh, last week. Um, the good thing about the meeting was it got everyone to the table from Appleton's Broadband Committee and Select Board. Um, from HOPE, um, Select Board representation was just Sarah. Um, and then we had four committee members. And essentially it was a meeting to go over the fact sheet and the project. Um, I think a lot of people, it seemed perhaps didn't read that before over the last six months. So, um, it, they reminded us it's a two-year project. Um, there's no new information. There's nothing that I'm incredibly excited about. Um, it's still a little frustrating. There's still unknowns. It was supposed to start July 1st. People are applying for it. They still have a backlog of people that applied before this effort started. They're still working, I think, is in Bristol to a uh, Bremen uh, to 
finish up some of those things. So they don't even anticipate any hookups until September at the earliest. Um, there's still a couple straggler cares updates where there's issues between homeowners and them. And one is even LCI's third party splicer did a bad job and still hasn't fixed it four months later. So I, I am a little discouraged, um, but I'm not surprised. Um, it's kind of going on track the way I anticipated it. Um, and so the hope, hope select board seems to be okay with everything. And so we're just chugging along and we have another meeting scheduled with LCI and hopefully all the same participants from Appleton and Hope um, later this month. And I'm hoping that over the next month or two, people will ask more questions, ask uh, more specific questions um, and maybe see um, for themselves what is getting done and what's not getting done. So that's kind of where we're at. Thanks, Melissa. Um, any of our Peninsula, Blue Hill Peninsula people wanna? Oh, and then. If, um, Hi, Deborah. this is Donna. Um, I, I can just jump in real quick. Um, right. So we applied for an NBRC grant, um, just a small amount and, you know, really never applied for a federal grant before just to see if we can get an engineering study. So we didn't get that. And, you know, that's really no surprise, but, um, you know, the things that I've learned from that process is that we do have to have secured funds. So my application didn't say the funds we had were secured. The application was probably like for $100,000 or something like that. The other piece is because, um, and I spoke with Charlotte Mays, and she's also with the EDA um, about the results of the NBRC. And she also said that they want, she really wanted to see uh, more um, business involvement in the application that the businesses really wanted broadband and broadband internet. So that was a piece um, she said that it would have helped us. And then the key thing that um, why we didn't get it is that they had a, you know, a small bucket of money. I think it was like one or $2 million and they had 31 applications, you know, applying for $16 million in grant money um, for our small, you know, two, three time coalition, she said, you, you know, we just really couldn't compete with the larger regions. But those are three things that I took away um, from that process. And um, now that you're, when you're speaking of the EDA, I may, might take a look at that and, you know, see what we can do with that for ours. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, uh, Cliff, you were next and then Jeremy. Right, uh, so just to quickly report that the uh, South Thomaston Select Board met last night and uh, you may recall that at the warrant, uh, <clears throat> the town voted to give the Select Board authority to commit Rescue Act funds to the Axiom study uh, and this was done yesterday. Okay, um, let's see, they haven't, they haven't, uh, they haven't done it. Uh, they haven't committed to joining the interlocal agreement though, right? Well, we, we had the, uh, uh, our attorney's uh, letter was reviewed and edited. Uh, so that's still under discussion. Okay. All right, um, Jeremy. Jeremy, did you have your hand up before? Um, he's frozen, Deborah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, did anybody else ha have anything to add? John, John Gibbons. Hey, for Union, uh, see, I've already talked about the Axiom meeting last week that went very well. We expect to have the interlocal agreement on the November ballot. We still have three steps to go through, but we're pretty confident of that. And uh, in reaction to the memo that you sent out a couple of weeks ago about uh, generating excitement in the town, having regional captains going out, they're being responsible for areas. We've had a number of discussions about that. And uh, we were initially thinking in terms of geographic segments of the town, but when we get into it, there's lots of other, lots of other than geographic sub elements in the town. We have a strong chamber of commerce that can, uh, that can reach out to the business community. 
we have a union historical society that has tentacles all the way across the town and into many other towns in the area. We have a seniors association and there's many others. And uh, we're, well, we're making progress on that topic. Um, those are great observations to share. Thank you. Thank you, John. Great. Sorry for the dog squeaks. Have a puppy here like I have. Unless anybody has questions. Uh, yeah, and Jerry, uh, Jeremy's still not with us. So, yeah, any questions or anybody else would like to add anything? Okay. So I think um, the message on, the, on number nine is just that we're still looking for, we're still trying to beef up a finance committee um, and that we're still trying to get our Marcom group. Um, some progress has been made there um, under number 10, but we're really trying to get the Marcom group together. You know, we obviously have been working on lots of things and that's Axiom stuff. And that's, you know, talking to, a lot of folks about the funding and these applications and et cetera, et cetera, which seems to be the, um, you know, the real focus right now. So um, it, just a reminder, I was reminded by this um, uh, when Rockport uh, sent a note to me today because, you know, they were putting together their select board agenda item for the um, August 24th and said, you know, is it really um, because because we don't have very many people that are um, less than 25 over three um, for um, businesses and households, um, you know, are, are we really is Rockport really um, able to um, provide these funds for, um, you know, for uh, broadband? And, um, and, and they, did, they were not aware of the FAQs that had been issued by Treasury. So, that, you know, in the interim final guidance, just a reminder to everybody, in the interim final guidance, it basically set, made it sound as though we were limited to 25 over three for the use of ARPA funds for broadband. And through, you know, all of our efforts um, and the efforts of cities and towns across the nation, um, Treasury, you know, issued those FAQs that we had provided you guys copies of in the past that um, in particular, um, in response to questions 6.8 and 6.9, they made it abundantly clear that these funds can be used for other than just unserved and underserved. Um, you obviously would have to use them for the unserved and underserved folks in your town, but it says that you can use them for more broadly if it's you know economically necessary to do that and and blah 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 blah. I mean, it makes it wide open, so there is no issue with respect to that um, with the ARPA funds. And of course, I let Rockport know that, but I just wanted to make sure everybody remembers that those FAQs are out there, and those are the clarifications to the initial interim guidance, which was a, a negative thing for us. Jeremy, you're back. Did you have something? Uh, sorry, John, did you want to comment on that? Yeah, no, I just wanted to understand that. Are you saying that the 25-3 is not a hard limit at this time? No, it's ab funds? absolutely not a hard li limit okay. for the purpose of right. using ARPA funds for broadband. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do we have not. to pay any attention to it at all? Really not. I mean, okay. you no, know, I, I would say this. If you had, if I mean, all of us have some locations that are 25 and three below, you certainly mm -hmm. couldn't build out and leave those guys out. But given that we're into universal access, you wouldn't be anyway. So okay. it really gotcha. is of no relevance to us gotcha. at the end of the day, uh, which is great. Jeremy, uh, you're on mute. Sorry, I lost power for some reason. And I don't know yeah. what happens when that I happens. Saw you disappear. <laughs> um, yeah, we lost I, in Northport too. I just wanted to mention, um, about the EDA grants and the comment from Blue Hill about the businesses, that's critical. So if we're doing the EDA grant, if that's the plan, we really got to tie, get business support, you know, regionally, small businesses, large businesses that will take advantage and could take advantage of this. That's going to be critical um, to every EDA grant is business, business um, support. Good. We heard that from the McHead people, but it wasn't quite highlighted as much as it has been today. So that's been really helpful. And um, I know we have an economic development committee meeting tomorrow in Rockport, and I'm going to be talking about that with them. And so we need to consider that in all of our towns. Carla? Yeah, we, we do have the one page fax sheet from the EDA. So I, if people need that or want to see that, we could certainly send that over. The, yeah. The Notes from yeah, is that, that okay for me to send that out to everybody? Absolutely. I think that would be, and I can revise it. We can look at it again, make sure that it fits um, 
um, with our overall group as well. Just okay. one, one point I wanted to make about that. It's uh, also businesses that may have fiber, they're concerned about their workers not having it. And, and this was pre-pandemic that they were worried about that because in a number of businesses, they need to access um, files, information at all hours. So um, that, that's just another way of approaching that kind of application for EDA. And I think a big part of it as well is, is, the, um, is COVID related. A lot of these funds are supposed to go to COVID. In essence, what I got today in talking with Max was is if COVID happened again, something like this, um, how will this kind of project benefit the region? Um, and I mean, there's no question, right? I mean, this is, it's a, a no brainer on this. Right. Yeah. yeah. Can you, right. can you tell that to the Knox County commissioners, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah there's no, I'm sorry, but are you, I mean, are you just, saying that some members of our elected force may not have a brain if you're referring to yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just out of touch, I think, with the reality of today's world. I'm sorry. That was my one editorial comment, Jeremy, that you will get today. That was it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you heard mine. Yeah. Okay, you guys, well, we usually, right. oh, John, did you have something? No, okay, you mm. sure? Okay. okay. Um, we usually um, adjourn at 6.30, but now it's 6.09, so we're doing better uh, today. So we said we'd try to be quicker. So. And um, if it's helpful, as I mentioned, uh, and we talked about earlier, I'll stick around for a couple of minutes um, once we adjourn uh, to just have discussion about non-agenda items, if it would be helpful. So perhaps um, a motion to adjourn, Deborah, and then I'll stick around or whoever else wants to stick around for, if need be. Okay, can we have a motion to adjourn? Jeremy, that's your specialty. So moved. <laughs> Melissa, you seconded, didn't you? In hope. Yeah. I, thought, I thought I saw it. Melissa yeah, she definitely it. seconded it. All in favor, Melissa right? Hall, there it is. Melissa Hall, Foster Hall, okay. seconds. Okay. And say, oh, can we all be in favor? Can this be like Thomas did? Yes, yes, we <laughs> all raised your hands. And yes, right. Okay. All right, well, guys. Thank you okay. all. Okay, so Matt's going to stay on if uh, anybody wants to stay on. Otherwise, stay on for a couple of seconds. Thank you. Thank you all. Take care, everybody. Thank you.